this now. So uh, let's go back to let's go back to our lesson here. Let's go back to our lesson. Did we uh, okay? We we did finish that, right, Carla? That was St. John. Okay, okay. So now watch this now. So um, here's something to Acts, and this is this is awesome right here. Let's take a look at Acts 20. Let's take a look at Acts 20, and um, let's take a look at Acts 20. Um, let's take a look at verse. Now here's here's and this is the interesting part here. An overseer is is a uh, is part of the bishop's office. Overseer is part of the bishop's office. But now, and, and probably the best way that I could give it to you is that is that the bishop is nothing more than a glorified elder. So let me let me say that one more time because now understand this now, um, the ordained position is elder, but the bishop is nothing more than a glorified elder. Uh, that just means an elder at the highest form. That's what that means. A bishop is the elder at the highest form. And so, um, so what actually happens here, so, um, so now he's, uh, so now the Holy Spirit has made you an overseer. Now, now, now this is the reason that you could have a, you could have a, and I, and I hope you, hope you get notes on this. Um, you could have a, a bishop could be someone that oversees churches, which is your, which is your general concept, which is your general concept of a bishop. But a could also be a. Um, there is a bishop that's called a. Tremendous in administration is a bishop over records, and that's an auxiliary. That's an auxiliary bishop. Um, now, the kind of bishop that is a bishop ordinary, a bishop ordinary. There's about six different kinds of bishops, and so I'm a bishop ordinary, um, which means that I that I uh, I'm at an ordinary of overseeing churches, overseeing churches, ministries, and businesses. Um, and so now watch this now. And so, but then you have, but then you have elders that are in high Because now remember, now remember the process of an elder. Remember the process of an elder. And I know that some, some, of, some of you may not have been through that class yet, but, uh, but remember the process of an elder. An elder has the, has the, assi the assignment to oversee and to assess the set gift in, in carrying out the assignment that he has or she has to vitally important now now think about this now think about this think about the huge opportunity that we actually that we actually have uh, to identify now let's say for instance God is uh, God has called you to um, uh, God has called you to pastor and start a church and you know those those are two different things let me try that one more time I say you do know that those are two different things. See, is it is the one thing that God's called you to pastor? Uh, because God called you to pastor, starting a church is not automatic. That's not autom those two things are not automatic to each other. So now think about this now. So let's say, for instance, God has uh, God has called you uh, to both uh, to both be a pastor and 
oversee, I'm sorry, and start a church. That's what God wants you to do. Think about the huge opportunity uh, that it is for you to actually be part of a team before venturing out to actually uh, to actually do something like that. Because let me let me tell you let me tell you let me tell you one of the uh, one of the now there, there's this guy you you guys ever heard of uh, uh, Michael Chickwood? Michael Chickwood uh, almost talked me out of pastoring. I mean, you don't even know it to this day. You don't even know it. That man had me so had me so scared. I mean, he had me so scared that all that all all bishops and pastors and people are going to jail because because they started church. And then I had to come back into my salesman. I had to come back into my salesman mentality to understand what he was doing. He was trying to sell his program. And so, so he 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 picks out not all not all these successful pastors. He picks out all the pastors that went to jail. That's what he did. He picked out all the pastors that went to jail, and then he then he uh, then he magnified all the pastors that went to jail. And, you know, and then he looks at you and he says, and he says, uh, you don't want to go to jail, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go to jail, do you? You think your pretty little wife gonna wait for you while you get out of prison? She'll be with somebody else. <laughs> and I'm telling you, he almost and this was this was uh Lord Jesus, how many years ago was that? Let me see, we're 26 years old, we've been in Waldorf for 21 years. Uh, so we're probably talking about 17 years, about 17, 18 years ago. Um and so, man, so, I mean, he, you know, I mean, man, he, you know, he, he come up with all of that. But here's, here's the reality, because I, I just believe in whatever situation is, I want to learn. I want to learn something. What, what, you, what am I going to learn from this, uh, from this experience? Or uh, it, it's, it's a fact that some pastors went to jail. That is a fact. That is not, that is not made up. That is a absolute fact. And so that means that we better know what to do if we're if we're going to pastor. That means that we we better know what to do. We better know what we're supposed to do. We better know the rules because uh, one of the things that's 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 really clear is IRS will come and set in your church, and if that and if they don't see this money handled properly, uh, you know, and like uh, let me just give you a for instance. One of the one of the things is making change right in the bucket. They sh they have permission by the government to shut you down instantly, lock your doors, put everybody out the church instantly. If you making if you're making change right at the altar, so you know so and and that's really and that's really serious. And now now think about this now. Think about this. I heard Mike Murdoch uh, mention this, that he knows a pastor that could not find one receipt and it gave RS permission to come and set up for the next two years in that man's church. Are you here? Gave him permission to set up in that man's church. And I know, I know somebody else that RS came set up in that church and now, now, now think about this now. Came and set up in that man's church. And, and this is the guy that I know. Came and set up in his church at $90 an hour. And the man's already in trouble financially. You didn't hear what I said, did you? Charge the church ninety dollars an hour, and he's gonna set up in there three days a week for about five hours at the church's expense. That's already in trouble. All because couldn't find some receipts, and now, and now if if, if this if this whole movie don't play out. Don't play out uh, 
in a way that satisfies RS, guess what? Somebody was going to jail and did. And if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, the brother got 20 years. Wonderful pastor. Wonderful pastor. Got 20, got 20 years. Next time I saw one of Chickwood's uh, magazines, he was on the front cover. It was just another opportunity for Michael Chickwood to put another preacher on the cover of a magazine. Now, now think about this. And this brother's qualified to pastor. This brother's qualified to start a church. Are you with me? And not only did he, not only did he go to prison, his wife went to prison too. Are you here? You don't want to talk about that. Not in ministry class. I'm see, why am I even saying this? Here's what here's why I'm saying this. Because when you have when you have a team, when you're when you're carrying out a team effort in the church, everybody has to do their job. Every single, every single individual have to have to do their job. Every single individual have to do their job. Now, understand this, how one of the ways, because I know this, because I know how all of this rolls out. I don't have any temptation. I don't have any temptation, nor do I have position to steal money from the church. I'll say that one more time. I don't have temptation and I don't have a position to steal money from the church. You know why? Because my hands never touch it. One of the things that uh, one of the things that uh, that Bishop that Bishop James R. Peebles drilled in us in ministry class. You know what that was? Stay away from the three G's. Stay away from the goal. Stay away from the girls and stay away from the glory. Drilled in in us. Drilled in in us. Every time he got the opportunity to say something in ministry class, drilled it in us. Stay away from the three G's. They all will get you in trouble. Mm -hmm. So you got to stay away from the goal. And so, you know, and so I picked this up. And then when I saw, when I saw, what IRS is really looking for, thanks to Michael Chickwood, um, so I won't just crucify the brother. Uh, so um, when I saw all that, all that, now, now understand this, that's the business side of church. That's the business side of church. So you can't just, so you can't just, you can't just pick up your Bible and say, I'm going to do ministry. It's got to be more than that. You can't just pick up your Bible and say, okay, okay, I'm going to start me a church. Okay, no, you're going to go to prison. You're going to go to prison if you don't learn that business side. And so now watch this now. So there's a tremendous opportunity because now here's the, now here's the thing. God calls us in ministry in order to, in order to uh, carry out particular, in order to carry out particular things. And now understand this. Now here's one of the things that God. Here's one of the things that God spoke, uh, and he, and this is what He spoke to the Apostle Paul, um, over in the Book of Timothy. He says, He says, God counted me, and He counted me faithful. One twelve, First Timothy one twelve. He counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. So now understand this. Now that's one of the things that God. That that's one of the things that God absolutely wants to drill in you. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Do you realize how many people, how many people in ministry are not faithful? I mean, have you guys ever thought of that? Have you guys ever really thought about that? Okay. Now think about this. How many elders, how many elders do we have that's just simply not faithful? Now understand this. A no call, no show is that that's called unfaithfulness. That's called not being not being predictable. And and people that are consistent are predictable. And God doesn't want to put his hand on people that aren't predictable. Does that make sense to you? I mean, you don't want to put your hand on people. I mean, how'd you like to turn, how'd you like to turn uh have somebody watch uh or manage all of your money and they're not predictable? 
That's a recipe for your. Uh, that's a recipe for your. Um, uh, for your business to fail, if they're if they're not predictable, and then you've given you've given some life of your business over to somebody that's not predictable. What's going to happen? You don't know because you don't you don't know when they're going to be there when they're not going to be there. Does that make sense? And so then now understand this, and then God judges us. He judges us on our faithfulness. And so one of the things, uh, 1 Timothy 1.12, he counted me faithful, putting me in the ministry. Come on, put your finger in your chest. Say, God counted me faithful, put me in ministry. That is absolutely what he did. Now, and you know, and, and one of the things that one of the things that I did, man, and uh, you know, I didn't think I didn't think about this as being uh you know, I'm I'm trying to be faithful. That's that wasn't my idea. You know, when I when I was uh, when I was coming to church, and I didn't miss a Sunday, man, with five children. Even even when I had to even when I had to uh, catch the bus, I was catching the bus from uh, I was catching the bus from Southeast, almost over by Eastover. I was catching the bus from there, clean cross, clean cross DC to uh, Northeast. Uh, coming to coming to Jericho, you know, a time that a, a period of time that I didn't have a car with five kids. Uh, all of them had coats. I didn't have one. Couldn't afford me a coat. But I'm not going to see them without one. And so now, I was just say, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't look at that and say, um, you know, I'm I'm just trying to be faithful. That's going to be short lived. When when that's when that's what you that when that's what you have to uh, rehearse in your thinking every 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 day and every morning and every Sunday you're gonna stop rehearsing that at some point. I my, my thought process was I owe God, God I owe you. I'm never gonna I'm never gonna be paid up on this deal. I'm never gonna be paid up on this deal and how you brought me out. I'm never gonna be paid up on this deal. I don't want to be paid up. I always want to always want to have the feeling that I owe you. And then secondly, another thing that uh, another thing that I uh, uh, a mentality that I had was not only that I owe him, but I need him. I need him. I need him. Uh, I know that there are some changes in my life that I absolutely need. And I need him to. Uh, to bring the rest of those changes in my life that are necessary. And so now understand this now, understand this. Now I've been pastoring, I've been pastoring for 26 years now. 26 years, April, past April was marked 26 years of pastoring. Um, I've been, I was saved a good while before that. And I still, I still, am at that place where I feel like I owe him and I need him to make some more changes in me. Are, are you with me so far? I need him to make some more changes in me. And you know, so it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me who got a microphone. I want to sit down and I want to hear what you got to say. You, you understand that? I want to sit down and I want to hear what is it that God taught you? What is it that, that God taught you? That that may be a that may be a uh, a launching pad for what I need to receive somewhere in my life. Do you realize that? Do you realize that every last one of you, if 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 uh, if we just sat down and listen to each other long enough, do you realize that every last one of us that are setting up in this place, uh, every last one of us have some information that that could that could benefit the next person? You realize that. And every last one of you has some information that could benefit me because I didn't come down your street. I was I didn't grow up on your street and I didn't come down your street. Are you with me so far? Yeah. And so now watch this now. And so um, so one of the greatest things in ministry that you and I could ever do is be teachable. The, the, you understand that? That's one of the greatest things that you and I could ever do. Be teachable. Be teachable, man. You know, because when you stop being teachable, 
is when is when God can no longer use you. We have to remain teachable. That's the reason, man, I can sit down and listen to anybody. I can just sit down and just listen, just absolutely listen to anybody. Does that make sense to you? No, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that I, that that everything that they're saying that I, that has to be has to be revelation to me. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. As a leader, come on, put your hand in your chest. As a leader, As a leader. your revelation or every revelation you have should not be a revelation to me because I study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But some of the things you say should be revelation because I have not grown up on your street. Amen. Do you did you get that? So one of the one of the tremendous things that one of the tremendous things that we should be able to do is that that's be teachable. Let's be teachable. If we're not teachable, we're headed into a red zone. If we're not teachable, we're headed into a red zone. And you don't ever want to go into a red zone. Now, let's uh now let's let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this, and I think we're gonna have to start closing. Uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, let's see where I want to take you now. Okay, let's finish. Let's finish out with Ephesians three. Let's finish out with Ephesians three. Now, uh, and and like I like I said, you know, uh, I, it dawned on me last week that when I was when I was teaching this. Uh, when I was teaching the uh, introduction to ministry class, that um, most of you guys have never received that information uh, because of how new you are to the uh, to the ministry, uh, and because of how long ago it's been since I actually taught it, and then some of the things that we need to teach uh, in leadership training. Uh, they didn't get, and some of those things you haven't received either yet. And so what we, what I want to make sure that we do is just, you know, uh, they're welcome in your class, you're welcome in their class. Can we do that? Uh, you know, until we get through the information, then we can, then we can launch forward and really uh, get some, and then we can launch forward and we can talk about some new things. But, but initially, we need to make sure that we update you on all of the things that, uh, on all of the things that we uh, that you may not have, uh, that you may not have received. So this it is going to require your being teachable. You know, you may you may uh, you may say, man, I we, you know, Bishop, we have already been through this. You already talked to us about this. Well, just be teachable because uh, more than likely you don't remember it all. You don't remember it all. I can I cannot tell you the amounts of information that I set through and it was and it was it was in my book it was old information but when I heard them teach it I I still got something from it I still got something from old old information you know why one because I'm teachable two I'm hungry enough to find something through what you said are you with me Amen. Okay, so now watch this. Now, what did I say? Ephesians? Okay, Ephesians chapter number three. Let's start at verse number seven, Carla. Okay, now let's walk through this slow. Well, not too slow. Uh, whereof I was made a what? A minister. What? According to the gift of the grace of God, I, you know I love every scripture that put those two that put those two things together. According to the gift of the grace of God, according to the um, according to the gift or the doma uh, of the grace of God. Another place it is um, it is 
charisma. But anyway, um, according to the gift of the grace of God. So now remember this, and this is one thing that it, it, it bears repeating. You really have to remember this. There is a uh, there is a grace that goes along with whatever gift you access. There is a dimension of grace that is attached to every gift, to every gift that you access. And so now one of the one of the challenges that I think that that I think that we have is that is that. Um, we don't always we don't always see that um how can i say this we don't always see nor do we utilize the grace that is on every gift that is something huge that i believe that we need to start a process of making sure that we're doing you know i mean i, I guess the question is do we really ask god do we really ask God, well, God, what's the grace that's on this gift here? What, what is the grace that I have access to while I'm, while I'm actually dealing with this particular, uh, this particular gift? What's the grace that's on this office that I'm being introduced to? What's the grace that's on this ministry that I'm being introduced to? What is the, what is the grace that's associated with it? So now understand this now, because there is a grace that's associated, and the grace is not just God's saving ability. Grace is uh, grace is an empowering substance uh, that that empowers you to operate at a particular at a particular dimension. And so it's vitally important that we begin the process of really understanding that if there's a grace that's on. And until you and I begin to access the grace, there's a whole bunch of things that you and I are never going to, uh, we're never going to uh, fully uh, do or participate in because we don't, we're not accessing the grace of it. You know, grace is part of the, the tools that God has actually given us to use based on what he's asked us to do. Does that make sense? And that's one of the reasons, now watch this, and that's one of the reasons that we have to make sure that we stay, that we stay connected uh, under the spout where the glory comes out. That God has, see, God has given us an assignment. See, you, you have to understand, God has given us an assignment. And when we're, and when we're, where, if, when we are where we're supposed to be, one of the things that God uh, allows is for us to access the grace, not only on our gift, not only on our calling, but also on the on the ministry that we're that we're assigned to. And so now understand this now. So we have so we have a grace that's associated here. There's a grace that's associated. What grace is on this? What grace is on this ministry? What grace is on your calling and on your assignment? What grace is there? Let, let me ask you. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you do you know that? Uh, do you know that every single individual that's uh, uh, that 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 attends Heritage Church International? Do you know that every individual can prophesy? Do every individual prophesy? Of course not. Do you know that there are other facets of God's grace that God put on this ministry that you have access to? But I can promise you, even in leadership, not everybody, not everybody's walking under that. Not everybody's walking under that. You know why? Because we have not really spent enough time really focused, really focused on. What grace is on this place? What what grace? What grace is is on this ministry? What what grace is on it? And so now now now, I would go so far as to say, some of you are not operating on the grace that is on your life. You know why? Because we got so caught up in the gift that we haven't even understood the grace. Hadn't really sat down and really even 
are given enough thought about it. But there's a grace that's on you. There's a grace. And see, and, and understand this, bears repeating, uh, it's not automatic. The grace that's on your office is not automatic. So, so now it, it's it, it's not one of those things that just automatically shows up. Because now understand this: if you're not operating, if you're not operating on the rules that are set that that are that are associated with your office or with your gift, then you're you're probably violating. You're probably violating the operation of way out there somewhere for you. You you understand that? How many of you say no? I don't understand that. Uh, okay, so we all understand that. Okay. Um, watch this. So when we when we think about this, and when we think about the grace, and maybe we need to talk about that. Maybe we need to talk about that. Maybe we need to talk about um, the uh, and and to distinguish the gift from the office from the grace. And then when we identify that, and oh, and oh, oh, and put down this too, Carla, because we can't just talk about the gift and the office and the grace without talking about the rules. What are the rules that are associated with that office that causes your that causes your um that causes you not to violate the grace from operating? What do we need to what do we need to talk about in in respect to that? See, we have to really deal with these things because these are not things that these are not things that every that every ministry uh, really deals with. You know, okay, you got you got a gift. So what? You know, go work it. I mean, you don't now understand this. Once again, we only say we only do this in church. Because they would not dare bring you into, into any office in their business and say, hey, this is what, I, what you need to do. I don't know, it would be McDonald's too. But, um, you know, go just do that. Do what? Well, I want you, I want you to be, uh, 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 I want you to be the architect here. Go do it. Well, what, do I get some training? Do I get uh, do I get to uh, become familiar with your company? Do I get to do I get to uh, have an understanding of um, do I get to have an understanding of uh, the vision here before I just go start doing stuff? Well, see, the only place you do that is in church. Only place you have an expectation to do it is in church. <laughs> are, are you are you here? But but that's 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 so far off, folks. That's so far off. You know, if 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 we're gonna do anything at the height of its effectiveness, if we're gonna do anything at the height of its effectiveness, we need training. We need training. We need some level of orientation around what it is that we need to do. If we didn't, if we didn't, uh, if we didn't understand anything else, let's just understand the heart that the leader has around this particular thing. But do you realize how many of us we, we don't even, uh, you know, we got this, we got this, Bishop. We already know. We already know. Anybody that comes to you with a with a well, I know, I know, I know. Please understand. There's a there's a huge spirit of pride that is surrounding that, and you recognize it because what they're literally saying to you is, "I have no need for the information. I know it. You know what? I don't care how well I don't care how well or how much I've been in ministry. 
I so want to learn what you've learned in all the places that you had been that I didn't have the opportunity to go. I want to know what you know. I want to know what you know. I remember hearing uh, Kenneth Copeland. I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and close this up because my, my time is up. I remember hearing Kenneth Copeland uh, share this regarding Oral Roberts. He said he said um, he had, had a conversation. He said he had a conversation with uh, no Oral Roberts. Uh, said to him one day, uh, said, hey, look, uh, Ken, I'm, 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 uh, I'm flying out today. I'm coming over to your house. And uh, I'm going I'm to spend a few days with you. <laughs> he didn't ask how you doing anything. He didn't ask nothing. He didn't ask permission. He, I'm just come, I'm coming over. I'm going to spend a few days with you. And so, you know, and so he, uh, Ken Copeland said, oh, okay, come on. And uh, Ken Copeland said by the time he got there, Old Roberts was sitting up in his kitchen. <laughs> and, um, and he said, so they spent some, they spent some time together. And, um, and then he said, uh, he said uh, to Ken Copeland, he says, uh, um, he said, I want you, I want you and Gloria to come out to my house. And they came out to the house and uh and uh, he says, uh, and he says he got he got out. Or Roberts got out, uh, right out on the floor, kicked his shoes, kicked his shoes off, got out on the floor, told Kenneth and Gloria to kick their shoes off, get in the floor with him. And uh, his wife refused to get on the floor. So, um, and he said this, and he said. Or Roberts got his Bible, and Kenneth Copeland says everything that he learned, he learned from uh, Kenneth, uh, uh, Kenneth Hagen and Or Roberts. And he said this, and he said, uh, he said, they sat out there with their Bible, then Or Roberts looked at it with tears running down his face and said, Kenneth, teach me everything you know about faith. Kenneth Copeland was planning to learn something. And he and but Old Roberts, his teacher, his spiritual father, sits right there on the floor and says, Teach me everything you know about faith. Why? Because the man has the man has consumed himself with the subject on faith. And Old Roberts had enough sense to know that I am so hungry to learn as much as I can about faith. You coming up years behind me, I know you know something about faith that I don't. And I need you to teach me. You know, you know folks, let me tell you something. That's the kind of hunger I always want to have and I always want to keep. It. Where I never get so big and bad that I can't learn something from those that call me father. When we come to the point where we have an I know spirit, that's a huge statement that says, I really don't know. But I don't want you to know that I don't know. And it's called pride. And pride goes before every fall. So one of the things in ministry I want to make sure that we absolutely embrace. One of the things in ministry I want to make sure that we absolutely embrace. As I have prayed for years, God, give me a teachable spirit. I would encourage every last one of you to pray the same thing. God, give me a teachable spirit. Because do you realize that sometimes we don't know that we don't have one? Let me try that one more time. 
I said, because there are sometimes we don't know that we don't have one. We don't know that we don't have a teachable spirit. Because, you know, uh, I don't know about you, for years I had never even thought about it. I never even thought about whether or not I had a teachable spirit. But then when I, when I learned that I had, and this is the reason I can talk about it. When I learned that I had uh, a I know mentality, God arrested me one day. God arrested me one day. And from that day, from that day on, I start praying, God, give me a teachable spirit. Because I don't want to step into anybody's arena or anybody, anybody's environment and, and act like I know. And so here's one of the things that I've adopted from that point, from that point to this. Now, let me, let me say this also. When I got, uh, when I went, when I got to Jericho initially, There's a lot of things that I felt like I knew. But when I heard, when I heard Apostle Betty open her mouth, I realized how much I didn't know. And so I stayed there and I stayed there and I realized that that spirit of I know got on me when I left there. Well, it got on me when I, when I you know, some period while I was there. Because understand what happens when you're in a place, and I had to correct people here. Years ago, I had to collect, correct people here. Because when you're in a place and you're getting so much word, and you know you're getting word, you can go other places and be kind of snobbish. And you go to other places and you, and you, you, you realize they, they're not in the word. And you start to, and you, you become a little snobbish. And I did. I became a little snobbish and got arrested. Me. And it was from that point forward that I started asking God, give me a teachable spirit. Give me a teachable spirit. Because I, I had to acknowledge I didn't have one. I didn't have one. Everybody doesn't have what you have. Everybody's not learning what you learn. Everybody is not where you are. So we have to make sure that we are teachable. If you, want, if you want to receive at the highest level of revelation, come to bring yourself to the point where you are teachable. Because all kinds of revelation is blocked when you and I are at a place where we're no longer teachable. What we could receive, we don't receive because it's blocked because we don't have a teachable spirit. No way we could be where we are today if, if I did not gain a teachable spirit. How many of you understand that? Okay, well, I'm, man, I'm, I'm so far over time. Now, uh, On next week, on next week, we're gonna we're gonna uh, probably finish up with this, and I need to prepare the next uh, I need to prepare the next lesson for you guys to uh, as a handout. So make sure you get a uh, make sure you get a three ring binder. Uh, uh, Rhonda, we'll make sure that we send that to you uh, and Gail. Um, make sure you get a three ring binder. Uh, so that you can keep your, so that you can keep your, um, uh, so you can keep your handouts all together as I develop, as I develop those. And once again, uh, once again, uh, this is all me. So if you see some typos, charge it to me. Don't charge it to my administrator because she hadn't seen it. Okay. Charge it to me and my Mac, because I'm talking to my Mac and my Mac is developing it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Appreciate you guys so much, man. Love you guys to life. Hey, look, um, 
uh, make sure that uh, make sure you remember that we have uh, our book launch is uh, August fifth. Uh, I want you guys to be part of that. August fifth is seven o'clock p.m. Right? August fifth, seven o'clock p.m. Make sure you make sure you you're part of that. If you've not already pre-ordered your book, you might want to do that because orders are coming in. Uh, they're coming in pretty good, and so we we uh, we're gonna have to fill those orders before we um, fill the orders uh, on that day. So we're going to do everything in our power to have enough books, but um, we have some coming in this week, and then we're going to have to we're going to have to reorder. Uh, we're going to have to reorder uh, and see if we can get some more in before August fifth. I think we can do it. All right. All right. God bless you guys. Thank you so much.